How's it going everyone? This is James from James Films and I've got a really exciting tutorial walkthrough here for you today. First of all, I just want to thank my friends at NVIDIA and HP. They sent me a ZBook Studio with an NVIDIA RTX A5500 laptop GPU. A absolute powerhouse of machine. So it's crazy to have this as a workstation when I'm on the move and still having these same render speeds that I'd see with my big desktop computer. It's got 64 gigabytes of RAM as well. So that's exactly the same I've got in my computer. So I'm consistently blown away with how they're able to pack so much into these smaller and smaller machines. Absolutely blowing my mind. So definitely check this one out. I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. So that's the laptop we're using for today's video. I've also got a Reverb VR headset sent to me by the team at HP. And I've really spent the last couple of weeks just experimenting with VR and just kind of seeing how it works how I can view my renders through it, and it really has been game-changing. I went in with kind of low expectations for what VR was going to be like, to be honest with you. I didn't really think it was going to be as immersive as it really is, especially with, you know, renders. I consistently get a lot of comments here on YouTube, on Instagram, elsewhere, with people asking me to make my renders more immersive. Beyond just the photos, I've been working really hard to make a lot more animated videos recently. And since I've got uh, the new machine here with a really powerful GPU, from NVIDIA actually as well, that I've actually been able to render out frames a lot quicker. Stuff that was taking me like 20, 30 minutes per frame to render before is now taking me about 20 seconds per frame, even for these crazy animations that you're seeing on screen right now. So that's been really game changing for me recently to really be able to churn out these videos that I just otherwise wouldn't be able to before. Uh, even just editing these in the viewport was a challenge to begin with, to put these together. So I'm really excited to actually be able to bring my renders in a completely different way to you, the viewer, and have you experience uh, you know, just this relaxing space in such a different way. And now I'm really working hard to take it to another level, another dimension here, and actually give you, the viewer, the power to look around in the space. You know, if you've got a VR headset, or even if you've just got, you know, a cell phone, you can enable those uh, really cool, you know, there's like the Google Cardboard where you can put your phone in and enable VR and just look around. That's something I'm really working towards this year. I've been experimenting a lot more with Unreal Engine as well. But for today, we're going to be working in Blender for this one. And I've got a scene that I put together here. And one thing, you know, I preach a lot in my videos is setting the camera angle early and kind of defining your scene around that. So this is when I actually started from one perspective originally, but then kind of wanted to build this out into a VR scene. So I kind of had to think about how to optimize my space, but also make sure that if you look all around, there's no gaps in this scene. You know, and so that's a very important thing to consider when you're working in VR because you don't want to just be looking around and all of a sudden there's just like the end of the world off the side. So for this one, like I said, I build it out this one way. And then when you're working in VR and Blender, if you go over to your camera and then down to your object data properties for your camera, you're going to want to set the type to panoramic. It's defaulted to perspective. So this is typically what it is before and you can adjust the focal length and all that. If you go to panoramic, it will also default to, I believe it defaults to the fisheye, but what you're actually going to want is the equi rectangular mode here. And one important thing to note too, when you're exporting these out of Blender, uh, running them out, you have to consider the output properties, specifically the resolution, and you want the X to be two times the Y dimension here. This just works for when you're bringing it into something like Steam. So I previewed these in Steam VR with their media player. It just lets the software know that this is how it's supposed to display this in VR. That's just kind of how the boundaries work. So to get this VR session tab enabled here, you're going to go over to edit preferences and then to your add-ons. And then if you just type in VR, you'll see this 3D view VR scene inspection. Just enable that. And then now if you hit N on your keyboard, so I'm making a new collection, hit M accidentally, N. N on your keyboard will bring up the side tabs here. This is hidden. And you'll now see this one for VR session. And you can just hit start VR session and you'll actually be able to preview your scene in VR in Blender, which is really cool. And if you actually have the paddles uh, that come along with the VR headset, so this one came along with two paddles, I was actually able to use these to kind of orbit around in this in the scene. You use the joysticks to kind of move yourself through the 3D viewport. Um, I have not been able to get this to work in cycles yet. I'm not sure if that's enabled, but I believe in Eevee you can play around with it. But mostly I like to use this just in like the viewport mode, the viewport display mode, just to kind of see where my scene is and also kind of get an idea for where I want to place my camera for the final render. In order for you to actually be able to see this on screen, so say you've got someone watching over your shoulder, you know, providing some feedback, if you go down into this section here, you'll see viewport feedback. Uh, if you click there, you can actually mirror your VR session so that actually shows up on your computer screen here. So you can actually see 
what is being displayed through the headset. So that's actually how I'm able to screen record that through my screen recording software. So this is a really fun thing to do. And so then once you're ready to render out, you know, like I said, just keep in mind those resolution uh, and also make sure your camera is the one that has the panoramic and equi rectangular mode selected. Once you render those out, you will actually be able to bring this over into Steam VR. So if you go over to Steam, uh, you can hit Start Steam VR, and it now has this VR uh, mode enabled. Right now, my headset is not plugged in for this, uh, but you actually are able to go over to the little hamburger uh, set here, and you can click on their media player. And this is how I've been able to bring things in. So I have this render here, this Tropic Test 1.png. And so I'm able to bring this in here. This was exported in mono. You can try a couple different modes too in Blender to experiment with these. And this was in 360 mode as well. Uh, so if I click on that, then I'm actually able to preview this in Blender. And it's super, super cool to walk around your render in 3D, in 360. This is just something completely different. I've never experienced anything like this before. And let me tell you, it really is truly immersive. I was playing a game that's like a demo game that comes with the uh, Windows uh, version of their VR set that's like a Halo preview thing. And when some of the monsters were like coming out, it, it low-key kind of felt like they were in the room. It was pretty insane. So looking at these renders, I know the screen recording is probably not doing it justice, but looking at this through the headset, it really feels like I'm there. And now I'm hoping to start to add some animation into these scenes to really enhance that view and make it really feel like you're part of the scene. This for me is just such a game-changing thing. I just can't wait to keep experimenting with this more. And like I said, I'm gonna start working a little bit more in Unreal Engine as well to kind of make these more real-time and just really bring you into the scene along with me. There's so much more to come and I just wanted to give you this initial preview of what everything looks like. Once again, a big thank you to NVIDIA for working with me on this video, as well as HP for passing along their VR headset. I've linked both of those in the description if you wanna check them out. Or a lot of fun to play around with and I'm excited to kind of continue to develop my VR work with Blender. Thanks so much for tuning in and I will see you on the next one.